Hello and welcome to Academy Live episode 33. 33. Hello Yay. and welcome. Hello and welcome. We are back after uh, last week's uh, uh, cancellation. Uh, yes, hectic we schedule, hectic schedule. <laughs> it's busy times. It yes, is busy times. Really busy times. Uh, but there are a lot of fun things that are, that's going on, right? Yes, that is a good thing. Yes, exactly. And we have, see, we have a lot of friends already, already from Japan, New Jersey. Awesome. Really happy to see you guys. South Africa. Oh, we, far, we're going, far away. We are going global. Yeah. Uh, and today's episode is actually a little bit of a, a special uh, episode in, in, uh, in a double meaning, actually. Yeah. We are in a new place. We are in a new place, but we've been here before. We have been here, I yeah. think, two or three times. And people always think we are in the bathroom or yeah, with, the, <laughs> with the tiles. Bathroom tiles here. Yeah, no, we are in, in David's studio. Yes. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, the uh, anatomy of a portrait shoot. Yeah. And, uh, uh, David is actually uh, going to shoot uh, the uh, Team Sweden for the Special Olympics. Yes, and, and they, are, they are traveling to Abu Dhabi uh, tomorrow, tomorrow to exactly. compete in the Special Olympics. And we are taking some portraits of them uh, here today. And, and so we thought, why don't we do the live from here? And we, we take a look at the, the set. Uh, we have taken a couple of test pictures and uh, so we can see kind of how the light looks like, but I'm also very much interested in hearing, David, on, on how and why you were thinking the way you were thinking, yeah. etc. So yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> 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 so, so that'll be really exciting. And, and, uh, and we also, we've been doing some voiceover work, uh, finishing up some uh, cool uh, movies, etc. Yeah, a lot of things to do. Yeah. It has been done. It's just hectic, very little sleep. But that's, I think that's a good thing because the alternative is really boring when you have nothing to do. <laughs> way and too much sleep is way too little to do. That's so true. Exactly. And, and the reason why you are shooting uh, the, the Sweden team that's going down to the uh, Special Olympics in Abu Dhabi is uh, not only because you're a good portrait photographer, but you are also doing a documentary about th that. Yes, we have been following um, some, f some of the participants uh, all around in Sweden to, to uh, document, uh, to shoot when they are training, living as normal people, doing all their, st uh, all, all their stuff uh, at home and in their training areas, and are really following them on the depth. So yeah. And you're following different types of exactly. athletes? Exactly. So we have, I think we have four or five different types of athletes. We have uh, one uh, f uh, riding horses, mm -hmm. and we have a judo master blaster. Yeah. Yeah. And we have uh, a swimmer. Yeah. And we have, actually the swimmer is over there. No, no, the no, no swimmer trainer done, yeah. is over there. Hello. <laughs> And we have uh, uh, track and field. Yeah, track and field. And yeah. then I think that's that's it. And yeah. then a lot of uh, characters around them, of course, the trainers, friends, and so on. So Coaches and so forth. Exactly. Yeah. So it's really interesting to really really follow them on this documentary basis, which is something that uh, it's you know it takes a lot of effort because it's so hard to travel around everywhere and just follow them and be that fly on the wall. Um, and it's really, really fun, and it's um, ad an adventure to learn to know these people at this level. Thank uh, you, Orbeck Photography. David's mic is a little bit low, so we increased it. Increased uh, David mic. Oh, there we go. This is David talking. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we have adjusted the sound. Cool. Hopefully now it's a better. Level. Yes, I will do some testing now. One, two, three, it looks fine on the meter. So, yeah, cool. This looks good. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I was actually uh, with you and the team in uh, in Westeros one yes. weekend, and we were sh following the judo team. Yes. They were having a kind of a base camp or a kickoff and uh, long full day trainings, and I mean really intense. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it's interesting to see how uh, capable they are, even though they are. Uh, Special Olympics, but they, oh man, I, I, I was afraid. 
<laughs> for getting to stepping on that mat. And, and yeah, you, you don't want to mess with them. You don't want to mess no. with them because, oh, mama, they, they, they were really yeah, and as brutal. Actually, Obama said about uh, these people that they represent the very best of human spirits. Yeah. And I really, and, and it's so interesting to really be there and really get to know those these people because they are it is. super unique and super special. And, and, you, and you mentioned that it's a lot of work and it's very intense long hours, but you get so much positive energy out of yeah, it. I mean, yes. it's just hilarious. Yeah. I mean, it's, you, 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 it's, there's so much love. So, so much, much love. So much love. But anyway, so you uh, got, you had, you're going to shoot uh, portraits of them that will be used in all different kinds of situations, but you're also going to use it for the vignette of the program. Exactly. We have uh, this vignette, of course, in each episode of this documentary series. And uh, these images we are going to do is in that vignette, so yeah. it's part of the vignette too. And and so you you then you must had um, you start with a vision. Always what start with a vision. Yeah. Exactly. You start with a vision, and you you think, okay, so what do you want to do, and yes. what did you want to do here? In yes, this we had the uh, <clears throat> despite my vision, my original vision was you know totally out of you know, so much things I wanted to, to do. Then we have the reality. I have to, to plan <laughs> everything so it will work with the reality. Yes. I mean, all these participants coming from all over Sweden, flying in, and they are, you know, the, the planes landed on different times, and yeah. the, the trains was coming different times, and some were delayed and so on. So we had to uh, really uh, make the schedule of my vision to work with the reality. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes you have to. Yeah, and that is, uh, I mean, that is part of do the adjustment of yeah. the photography uh, life. Uh, so, what I wanted to do was uh, to I wanted to shoot each participant in three different outfits mm -hmm. because they have three different outfits. They are three different kind of people in the documentary. They are the the. Uh, natural the default, uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, Naturally, yeah, and he's in, in, in casual clothes, yeah, casual yeah. clothes yeah. with no, no training clothes or so. That is one image. The other image is with the training, training clothes, or actually, the uh, the clothes which they, they are going, they're going to, they, uh, yeah, they have, will have the, the, cl the, <laughs> the clothes they will compete in, yeah. but they also do have the third. Outfit that is, which is the, kind of the Sweden dress, the Sweden dress which they will have when they represent Sweden when yeah. they walk into the arena and such, in, and they light the Olympic fire exactly. and all that. So yeah. that is the three different outfits, and yeah. we had I had to uh, make time, make sure that I had time to shoot all three different outfits. Yeah. And then we have the coaches, yeah. and we have some some uh, extra characters from the from the documentary. So There's a lot of people yeah. with three different outfits. Yeah. And my original vision was to have different colors in the background for each type of clo uh, clothing. Mm, okay. So three different backgrounds. Uh, but, and that was for the, the vignette. Yeah. Because in the vignette I wanted to have like blue and, and yellow and, and, uh, and gray. Uh, but then it struck me that in the vignette, since video is really low, res low resolution compared to uh, a still photography. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will be really easy to to do um, uh, cutouts to be uh, free lighting. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so yes, they, they yes. Take, they take out the background and then replace it with the colored background. Exactly. So I only shoot everybody. I shoot everyone on gray background now. Ah, okay. And for the vignette, we will do the the the, the cutouts. Okay. Uh, so only gray background, but still in a really nice man uh, way. So it looks uh, so it looks really nice. Yeah. Uh, so we only shoot black, uh, sorry, grey background, um, and we will look a bit later on how how we do that. Cool. And yeah. then, uh, what type of light were you thinking in the? Since we're going to shoot um, also group portraits. Yeah, that's the tricky part because you have uh, the individuals, yeah. and then you also have smaller groups, and smaller like, the, groups, like the yeah. judo team or the track and field team. Yeah. It's not thirty, hundred people. Exactly, but like six, seven, eight. Yeah baby people. Yeah. So the light needs to be to work uh, for a small group shot and, mm -hmm. and for single portraits and uh, it has to work. Uh, I, don't, I won't have any time to, to change the light because it's so quick. It's so many people that have to shoot in so many different outfits. So the light needs to be really safe. So even though they are, let, let's say, one meter off the best light spot, it still must be really, really good. So I selected, I choose the light that is really safe, yeah. that always ah, okay. become really, really beautiful 
Um, and we will look about look into that a little bit later. Yeah, so let, 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 we will walk over there yeah. and, and take a look at it. So we got a question here. Anders, last week you showed us uh, how to make hard sunlight, but when you use a B1 or a B10 without the OCF reflector, then the light will be a little bit harder because the light source is a little bit smaller. And when you use an A1 as the source, the source is even smaller. That's absolutely correct. So, so the A1 it will be smaller, absolutely. And if smaller light source, you will have shorter penumbras. In other words, it will feel even harder. Yeah, and, and, and I think the key, even if it is small, it's not small enough, because uh, if you look up at the sun, it's really, really small. So if you have the possibility, uh, move it backwards. Uh, That's the back. cheapest way to make it small. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and with A1, uh, if you don't have, if you are in a, a, in a controlled environment like the studio, uh, you can dim down the lights and you can move it really, really uh, way back because the light will be enough to uh, still uh, create a good image. But if you are in, uh, uh, in an environment where there's a lot of ambient light, then you might need a B1 or a B10 uh, to get that extra power because as you are moving it further away, you need extra, uh, uh, a little bit extra power. Yeah, because fewer light rays actually hit your subject. Yeah. So it will be weaker in that yeah, uh, way. Exactly, uh, yeah. way. Uh, so then you need more and more power. But one thing I think that uh, when you're using a reflector, why would you use a reflector when you want to make the sunlight? Because there is a reason that maybe you want to do that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, one, one, one thing is that what you can do is that if you have a bare light bulb or, or a flat front, you spread the photons in all directions. Mm. And, and with, the, with the reflector, you can collect those photons and have more photons hitting Which uh, makes the subject. Which makes, makes it possible for you to back up even further. And then you can back even further, yeah, exactly. So, so using a B10 without the OCF reflector, yes, it's smaller, but you lose a lot of light going out into the side. I mean, it's wasted photons. Yeah. But if you use the reflector, and uh, like the OCF zoom, it's not so much bigger. Uh, but it has these little walls that helps you to get uh, the photons going straight. Yeah. And then you can back it up even further and get, get a smaller and even harder light. And what about the snoot? The snoot, yes, the snoot actually uh, blocks light. You won't get any collimated light rays like this. You, uh, all the light rays that hits the walls of the snoot gets blocked out. So they disappear. So you only have the rays that is already going straight from the light source through the snoot. Yeah, so you through only get those, yeah. uh, and then the rest hits the black snoot and, uh, and turn into an, an, yeah. uh, heat. But the, the, the snoot is a really quick way to make the light source go small, quite small, small yeah. absolutely. So if you, have the power, if you have power enough, that's a really quick way to make the light source smaller. Yeah, and yeah, Mike, Michael Parson here says, group photo Saturday night, uh, and there's 20,000 people. Actually, it's 27,000 people if you look through the manual. <laughs> Uh, it's 27,000 people that we're going to shoot a group photo of. Uh, Michael and myself, we're going to work at the uh, big event uh, at Friends Arena. Uh, <laughs> it's called the Eurovision seven. Song Contest, but it's a Swedish final for that. And it's 27,000 people. Ooh. And uh, It's all pro photo lights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we have uh, 42,000 <laughs> A1s placed A1. out in the, ar in the arena. Everyone in the audience have one A1. Yeah, and, and then <laughs> and turn them against yourself and then boom, smile. <laughs> that would be. So uh, Dave says, why aren't you demonstrating instead of explaining? Good point, Dave. Why don't we do that? Let's, let's walk over and yeah. uh, I'll grab the camera and we'll uh, walk over and take a look at what you are doing. Yes, let's do that. Let's walk this way as the song goes. And here is the makeup going on, getting yep, ready. We, yes, here we have Shastin and Mila making some makeup. Yeah. Coach for swimming team. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Team Sweden. Team so Sweden. Coach. Yep. <laughs> Going to bring back a lot of gold medals, I hope. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. And here we have. Uh, here we have. Yeah, here we have Linnea. Hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Swimmer <laughs> expert. Yes. And she will. She will bring. Uh, home a whole bunch of uh, gold medals and silver medals. Yep. And uh, our, our medal <laughs> hope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, let's um, see now, this one is going bananas. And we're going to see. There is your big 
light source. Here is my big light source. Um, this was my selection for today. And A Pro Photo Giant here. is two, 240. Uh, it's a beautiful light source that really, really creates a really soft light, but still with a lot of contrast and with a lot of uh, depth to it, thanks to, thanks to its aimed um, light beam. So you won't hit the walls and floor so much, which creates all the shadows, which makes all the shadows dark. So, so now you have a huge studio here. Yes. Uh, why are you all the way in the back? Yes, that is a good question because I shoot because the people over here, and I, we, uh, me with the camera is just in front of them. So why am I so far away from the background? Yes, that is because with this distance, I can have a beautifully gr dark gray background, which is what I want. So you use the f the fall off basically. Exactly. So the fall off makes the background to be be the, uh, that gray level, the level of gray that I want. Yeah. Uh, so this is why I backed up. And this is something that I uh, often, actually often do. I use the distance to create the level of light in the background. That is something I think that many people forget. Uh, if I wanted the background to be really, really uh, like a high key, in this case, it would be actually better if we do like this far away and then light the background separately. Instead With of separate flashes. Exactly, instead of getting closer because you will never have a, a, a high key, a perfect high key with this one closed because the person will be totally outblown, of course. Yeah. So I always do this. I separate the model from the background and light the background separately. And I always start with the background. That is the best tip ever. Exactly. So you decide how the background is going to be and then you uh, m move forward towards the camera. Exactly. Uh, so this is one reason why, you want, why it's really good to have a big studio, because then you can control the level of the light of the background. Yeah. And uh, we shoot with a Pro 10, with a Pro Head in the Pro for the Giant. Yeah. And when I stand on this cross and I look at the light source, I can see that that is exactly in front of the... Uh, the big umbrella, the big giant. So you're in the middle. Exactly. I see that I'm, if you come with the camera, you can see that you are straight in front Maybe of it. Maybe it's uh, too strong. Maybe. Yeah, nobody, it works, yeah. Yeah. So that is how I decide which angle I want to have on the, on the, on the giant. Because ah, okay. that is the position I want. The height and the angle is all about when we see it straight from this position, when we see the light is straight on here. Yeah. Cool. And uh, so using a Pro 10, and let's see, let's check the settings. Yeah. Uh, at seven. There we go. Power level seven. <laughs> the channel one, group A, and so on. Just one light, no other stuff going on. Yeah. And um, then we shoot tethered back to the computer here. And, and so that. Uh, actually, power level seven is about 300 watt seconds. Yeah, 300 watt seconds. So it's you're slightly stronger than a B10. Yeah, I could absolutely do this with like a, <laughs> uh, I mean a B10 would work because yeah. we or in here, I mean a B1, absolutely. Then you have all the, all the way up to the 300. Absolutely. Uh, so really it's not all with. that super duper powerful. But so yeah. let's let's look at what we have here. Yeah, this is w one of the group shots that we were trying out with the with the judo team, and you can see the background here. You see the uh, the fall off here, going from bright into darkness, and we have this this uh, gray uh, background yeah. that really makes the people pop out. Uh, and pictures like this is, uh, I mean, it's light-wise, actually kind of simple, but it really works. It's really three-dimensional. If you were trying to do this with a big softbox, you would never have this, the shadows on the sides. You can really feel the three-dimensional feeling of, of, yeah. of, of the heads and the, the clothing and such. So, and this is Pro for the Giant. This is what is perfectly, this is perfect, a perfect selection to do this kind of group yeah. shots, actually. I'm gonna zoom in. There we go, camera's adjusting. Yeah, so it's just one giant straight on, and mm -hmm, uh, yeah. yeah, and of yeah. course, and of course, it's really important that you have the right uh, height of the of the light source, so we get the 
the darkness under the nose and, and such. And, and here's uh, one of the portrait test shots that we take. Like, let's see if we can get the camera to adjust with white balance and everything. Because this is really... Yeah, this is a, a, a test shot of uh, Jimmy, the, the ride. The he, dressage. The dressage uh, guy. He's really, yeah. really good at dressage. I think he will have a gold medal soon. Um, and here you can also see it's really, really simple if the camera will adjust correctly. Yeah. That you have this bright, everything that faces forward is bright and then it goes into darkness. And this is the Pro for the Giant specialty to have this three dimensional feeling to it. Now it sounds like this is like a commercial for, <laughs> for yeah. the Pro for the Giant, but it actually is a magical uh, light source. I really Let's love it. Let's see if we can find somewhere where it doesn't. It looks like it's uh, burnt out, but it's yeah. not. If you so. tap it, maybe it will. Ah, oh, you're thinking like that. Maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. So that's how it looks like. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. So that is why I... It's really nice. And then you have an even gray background. And do we have uh, one last test Yeah, image? we have this yeah. training, this coach for Jimmy. Oh, horseback riding, yeah. Yeah, horseback riding. Uh, yeah, the same. Just yeah. one giant straight on. It's beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. And then you can stand in front of that giant and, and it doesn't give you any... Oh, I need to take a look at that catch light. Yeah, I don't know how to zoom into that one, but this one I know. Oh, okay. You can actually see my... You can see my head here, down there. And let's see here. Yes, there sir. we go, yeah. Yeah, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing with catch lights as well. I mean, they really reflect everything exactly as it is. Yeah. Uh, but light-wise, I mean, uh, the, the light kind of wraps around you uh, and bends. No, <laughs> it doesn't bend. But, no, it doesn't. But it, it's such a wide light that when you're standing in front of it... Yeah, you get, you get rays from, from... From the left and the right side. Yes. And, and you don't get any shadows from you on on the image. Exactly. And, and yet the light is very, since it, since it doesn't hit my, the, the floors and the ceiling and the walls of my studio, they won't get any light from the sides, yeah. the indirect light, mm -hmm. which makes the contrast go just blah, blah, blah. So you have this three-dimensional feeling and, and really contrasty picture. Really nice, yeah. really nice. So that is why I love this light. Cool, a very simple setup. Yeah. You could do a similar thing I, without having the, the, the giant, I mean, let's say that if, you, if I have a, a uh, there you are, if we have a, a, a B10 and I have, or, or a B1, a B1X, and uh, I want to do a similar thing, I could use an XL umbrella. Yeah. I mean, the XL umbrella is also very big. Y you might just move it a little bit closer. Yeah, um, uh, and you have to watch when you use the XL umbrella, please, if this is umbrella and this is the flash, if you Let's step out into the oh, light. Yeah, let's step we have a lot of out into the light. If you stand on the X. <laughs> yeah. So if this is the XL umbrella and this is your light source, you need to take it a bit further away because you want the whole light source to be lit. If you have yeah. it really close, it will be really focused and you reach really far, but you won't have this big light source. Yeah, so the light source as far out as possible. Yeah, and uh, actually I have done this I try this so I really know that actually the the pole out from the umbrella doesn't is, doesn't reach enough ah. if you want to have you know the whole umbrella to be really like that one if you mm. if you see how the light source looks from here the, the whole umbrella is perfectly evenly lit yeah. and to get the XL umbrella to be that you need to have the light source really far away yeah. and then you actually need another stand for that one exactly so you, you could use another stand a second stand where you use uh, one of those hot sh uh, cold shoe uh, light umbrella yeah. things, put the umbrella in there and then you move the light out you know, on a separate stand and shoot into the yeah. umbrella. And then take a picture. Yeah, it doesn't have to be far. No, it, it's, it's just a little bit. Yeah, it's just a, a tad out yeah. if you want to have the whole umbrella. And do take a picture on the light source because yeah. then you see actually how the light source looks. And be sure that you are exposing so the light source isn't overexposed because then you won't actually see what the light source is. So take a picture of the light source, uh, expose it so you actually see the whole light source and no overexposed areas. Then you see what actually is uh, lit by And this your is spe flash. Spe especially important when you use a silver surface exactly. on the inside, like yeah. a silver umbrella or, or a giant. But if you have a white umbrella, 
it's not as critical, right? Exactly. Because it's the, totally the, the light thing. keeps on bouncing and, and you get yeah, light. Yeah, so you get the whole, whole light source. But with a white umbrella, in this kind of light, you will have lights everywhere, on everywhere, the floor, everywhere. Yeah. So the, all the shadows will be brighter and the contrast will feel let, less uh, contrasty and three-dimensional. Yeah, so, and so here, silver umbrella, perfect. Because even now, when you're standing, I can see shadows on your, on yeah. your, on your sides. And that's just because of yeah. the light doesn't bounce around everywhere. Exactly. And of course, you can have like black cardboards or, or something to block or out the light. Like you have. Yeah, you, have, you can have like <laughs> this, like uh, <laughs> black, curtains. black curtains that you can remove all the light from the walls. Uh, but it works just fine to have close yeah. black cardboards. And actually, if you do that, if you close the light from the walls, then you can have a white yeah. light source. Exactly. You yeah. just need to take all that light away. Yeah. Then you will have this dark, the dark parts that makes it look more three-dimensional. Nice. Yes. Very simple uh, setup, and you can uh, you can work fast in it. Uh, yeah, you and have a pretty good, uh, pretty big area of working area. Yeah. Where I mean, you can move around, and you can have the the, the models or the the talents moving around. You can do. Uh, individuals, you can do groups of two, three people, yeah. or, or or six, seven, as we had. So it, without changing the light source or anything, it's yeah. just all in one go. So it's yeah. really fast, really, really versatile in, in that in that way because it works for all kinds yeah. of uh, imagery. If uh, you want that look, which I do for this project, cool. Yeah, awesome. Cool. I, I I'm looking forward to spend the evening here with you so <laughs> let's yeah let's go and uh, and sit down now that we looked at some pictures and the setup and let's go and sit down and see if we have had any questions yes, on the that's on the always chat. exciting and then maybe let's see how the makeup team is doing over here you are oh, oh yeah. looks great <laughs> doing magic as always yeah, yeah thank you. great yeah. yeah cool we will Continue this. Doo -doo -doo. And let's see if we can find us here again. Oh, where are we? There we are. Whoa. So we got yeah. this question Would a D2 do on a giant 240? Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. D2 would have, uh, depending on, uh, first of all, which one of the D2s, uh, you have a, a 500 watt second and you have a 1000 watt second and both of them are, are cool. And I, I think the, the flat front there again, people think that a flat front cannot fill the, the round shape of the, um, on the, on the parabolic shape. Yeah. Um, but I am quite sure that the D2 will work just fine. Oh, uh, we got a, uh, is there a, a pro photo product map anywhere? Uh, which light sources work, works with, with, with which lights, etc. Uh, well, so uh, there is, uh, and I think they are available as PDFs. Uh, David Henderson, uh, let me look into that and I'll, I'll, I'll respond back in this one. Because uh, I, I know that there are printed versions of uh, the product map. And, uh, uh, and, and if they print it, they must be available on PDF. And then maybe it's available to, to, for, uh, to download somewhere in, uh, yeah. on the website. I will look into it and come back in this, uh, under this uh, video and respond in the questions here. Um, and, and, and in general, all light shapers work for all flashes. But like with any other rule, there are always exceptions. One exception is A1. A1 has an 80 millimeter head and not a 100 millimeter head like all the other light sources uh, or, or all the other pro photo flashes. But all the other ones are uh, 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters, and uh, so you can put anything on. And then there's one, another exception, and which you learned pretty recently. And I'm still <laughs> learning. Uh, and that is that there is an OCF line 
uh, which is called off-camera flash. And that line of, of modifiers, specifi specifically like the uh, soft boxes and gels, etc., it's made to be lightweight so that it's easy to carry with you. And they are made out of material that is not as heat resistant. But it's really light and uh, but it's it takes light, no, when, yeah, when you fold no it together, room. it takes no place, no room. Exactly. And I learned that the B10 is OCF product. Correct. So you can use anything with OCF line. And, but if you have a D2, like a couple of you have here, the D1 or the D2, or the Pro Heads as we're using uh, here today, uh, they have a halogen lamp, which is like 250 watts or 500 watts, and that's way too hot for these lines. So you, the, like the gels will melt and, uh, and some of the soft boxes might yeah. be damaged as well. So OCF line, ideally for the OCF flashes, which is uh, B10, B2, and the B1X and the B1. That's the OCF line. Yeah. Uh, but you can use the heavier stuff, like the, 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 the heavy RFI, soft boxes for the hot light lights, you can use those on the B10 and so forth. So you can go downwards because they can handle the heat and they have LED lights, so there is no heat. Hmm. Really simple. Yeah. Uh, and of course there's an exception to that as well, just to make everything <laughs> exceptional. Exceptions today. <laughs> Exceptionals. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, the exception for the OCF line is that we have two hard reflectors, the OCF Magnum and the OCF Zoom. You can use those. Uh, for uh, like a D2, etc., if you want to carry carry that along. But again, uh, uh, I, uh, normally, I mean, you're you're, you're tied into to, a, to a, a, a mains outlet, and then if you have a mains outlet, you have you're probably in the studio or so forth, and you can easily carry uh, other stuff with you. So, anywho. Uh, uh, if you had the option to use a front dome on the D2 with the giant umbrella, would you rather use the dome or the flat front? Uh, oh, so this is the good old question, because you have on, uh, on, on certain ones like the uh, D2 and the D1, you can replace the, or the, the even the B1 and the B1X, you can replace the glass Yes. Uh, the flat glass and put a dome on it. Yeah, if I can be, if I, I can just deep down just a tad in the physics when you have a silver surface as you do in a silver umbrella this is what what makes a silver surface to shine to light to be that light source as you want the position you are on when you look into the umbrella if you are the model if you look into the umbrella if that angle of the silver surface is angled towards the light source. In other words, if the light source can see the lights, the flash head, then it will uh, reflect. reflect. Okay. So if you have a flat front, will the light, will the the surface of the silver umbrella in that angle see the light source? It it will. In other words, it will reflect. So mm. you can have a flat front. Yeah. But. A flat front seen from the side as you do when you are inside an umbrella, which you all, all, all are <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, yeah. all been there. <laughs> it's of course smaller than if you have an uh, uh, extruding tube. That one will remain the same size no matter which angle you look. So it will be brighter with an with a extruding uh, dome. Yeah. You will have uh, uh, kind of, uh, not weaker, but smaller reflection than with a uh, extruding tube, but I I, th I probably I, I haven't tested it, I but I'm quite sure that you won't see any difference no. and it's on not, the effect. It's, it's hardly not measurable. Uh, hardly with, not, yeah. with, with the with the light meter, you can't measure uh, really measure it. And if you if you photograph the light source, which we nerds do quite yeah. often, don't we uh, all? <laughs> no, I they turn around and shoot that. the talent. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought they're about that. The light source. Uh, so so we uh, you 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 you. You still fill out the uh, uh, really, really well with the with the yeah. flat front. So it's not ne needed, but it's like everything else. It's uh, sometimes it's a matter of feeling or taste. Uh, there are some people that really like the dome. Uh, yeah. and I, I have domes because it's a matter of feeling and taste. I exactly. Have yeah. So, uh, but but then I think that the dome creates for me problems because then it's not as easy to carry with you.
Yeah, no, exactly. Then they, you know, then you need to have some security cap on or something exactly. like that. Exactly, but with the flat it's front, it's, it, everything is safe and there's nothing that you can really break. With the, the, with the dome, you have a, a, a surface that is uh, uh, sensible, sensitive for hmm. hammers and <laughs> dynamite. <laughs> yes, and, uh, and all that. <laughs> all that is sharks and stuff you have in your camera bag. Yeah. Uh, shooting a group of nine people using a B1, which Octabox is a good size to use? Well, like with everything else, the bigger the better. <laughs> if well, you can use the seven foot octa, awesome, just go for it, but uh, um, it's not needed. Well, yeah. the thing is that it's, uh, it's of course sub subjective, is that yeah. a word? Uh, it all depends on how wide do you want your penumbras, mm -hmm. how, how hard do you want light to feel? I mean, if you have this, uh, this group of nine people of really elderly people with a lot of wrinkles like Anders, you know, he don't want to have those wrinkles. <laughs> then it's really good to have a really big light source because, th because then all those things <laughs> will melt away. But if you have young, beautiful people, with a lot of nice skin bones, uh, 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 cheekbones, you know, really modelly like, then you can have a really small light source because there is nothing to hide. Yeah. So I would say that the bigger, the more hidier. Yeah. And the smaller, the more this, uh, you really enhance everything they have. And if you're going to shoot like George Clooney, where ha half of his uh, personality and character is with his wrinkles and the gray hair. and Like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Or, or an old fisherman, you know, <laughs> yeah. outside of Scotland yeah, somewhere. Yeah, like me. <laughs> <laughs> then you, you want to have that little... You, want the yeah, older, you don't want to hide to everything. Yeah. Exactly. So, so awesome. And then... Uh, so, uh, the uh, so the answer to the question is if you want to be safe go big yeah if you want to nail that perfect emotion of the feeling of your lights try to be smaller but it depends totally on what you have in front of your camera bigger exactly. safer that's so true yeah uh, not much questions today uh, I think we answered most of them uh, Martin Orian is having using the profile the standard zoom with the b2 and works uh, fine for him awesome excellent uh, I have seen uh, when you're close up or when you're, when you're doing like product, shoot, product shoots and you're really uh, close up, you, you, you can get a double shadow uh, from it. But if you're outside and you're shooting uh, uh, portraits, etc., then you have so much ambient light and, sun and so forth so that you, you will not be able to, to see that double shadow. And it, it is uh, a little bit nerdy. Uh, and we look into these small, small, small details that people don't even see unless we point at them. So, yeah. absolutely, uh, it, it works fine. Yes. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and uh, no further questions. I think we, we've gone through the, the, uh, your vision, uh, how you work f from the back towards the camera. Uh, you, you showed a, a very simple setup, I think, which it's a... Uh, it's a really cool setup. It's simple. Uh, yeah, it's really it should really be simple. simple. It yeah. should be. It must be simple because it has to work for so many kinds of people and so mm -hmm. many situations. Uh, and in this case, actually, on your question, which octa should I use? This is a good example of. I wanted as soft as possible to hide everything, wide penumbras, really, really soft. But yet, I wanted that contrast. Mm -hmm. to have this three-dimensional feeling to it, which the giant gives me. And if you don't have a giant, if you have an octobox, you can still have that contrast just by blocking out the light from the side. Mm -hmm. Then you will have the same uh, feeling. And there was this question uh, uh, earlier here about mi micro contrast, but that is our own show that we will talk about maybe later, because it, that's really nerdy stuff, ah. which we will not go into now. Because if you want to have something uh, if you want to say something about micro contrast that we'll, ha that we'll have some substance, then we need to talk, go really deep into physics, and we won't have time to do that today. And, and also in micro contrast, that, that really counts actually when you're doing black and white photos. Yeah. Then it's really yeah. important to, to have a control over your micro contrast. So, so it is, I think it's a good topic for, for those that shoot a lot of black and white and monochrome. And uh, 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 so we'll, let's, let's do an episode of that. So if, if there are no further questions, I think it's uh, time for us to uh, uh, charge. Oh, how do you communicate with models and put them at ease and guide them towards uh, what your vision is? Yes, there hmm. is so, I mean, <coughs> there is so many uh, models out there 
and everyone is a, uh, their own person. So yeah. you have to have a really good f feeling in uh, feeling for what kind of person that is, of course, to be able to do that. My, what I do, what I've learned is that uh, I want, what is really important is that the model feel, uh, have, um, believe in me, what's the word in English? Uh, the trust, 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 yes, yeah. that they have the trust in what I'm doing. Uh, I know that for many, many, many years ago, um, I read somewhere that the model can feel sympathy for you if you are fiddling around and don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And I was actually, I tried that, I like to be like fumbly and, you know, but, it, you know, it only made the model to feel like, okay, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm going in for brain surgery and the doctor is, you know, yeah. so that's, around. That <laughs> is a really bad tip because that yeah. doesn't work. It doesn't all. work. No. no. I so think it's I think that the model needs to feel that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that technically wise, that all the technique that is going on in the background, I mean, what aperture are you using? What power of the flashes are you using? That is something that the model should not have anything to do. You shouldn't tell them what is going on in your mind. You have yeah. to have this confident feeling. They have to feel your confidence. And uh, that, that is key. That is absolute key. Uh, even though it might be chaos going on, you as a photographer still have to be calm and have this uh, conf uh, confident aura. Uh, and also don't chimp. Yeah. That's, I mean, your, your focus should or has to be on the talent that's in front of your camera, not on the camera. Exactly. Do that not is chimp. That is so important because if you to pick, take pictures like this, poo, 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 great. Yeah. Poo, poo, poo. For every time you look down, the ball feels that, and yeah. you will lose the connection like that. Yeah. So don't chimp. Of course, you can chimp when you, in 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 some cases, but but you can be aware. You, of it. But then if you do it, like now we're shooting tethered, you take pictures, and then you either you chimp together with oh let's take a look at the pictures and say hey is there any one of these that you like. And, and in, in engage and involve the model or the talent uh, in the shimping. Try to make the model to not feel that you are losing their f the yeah. focus because yeah, it goes they are the like stars. That. They should be in the center all the time. Yeah, uh, I think that's really uh, uh, important. And yes. uh, and, and uh, co communication wise, I always uh, it depends. Actually, it's two different. I have two different routes. When we do s things like this, when it's really, really quick, then I am in total control. I, I try to say everything, to tell them to do everything, I, you know, because there is no time for us to play around. But that is the other route. If you have more time mm -hmm. when doing portraits, then we can start to play around. Then we can start, I actually quite often switch positions. So the, the person, if it isn't a professional model, have the camera and shoot me. That is always works. It always cracks up everybody because yeah. When we compare my face to their face, they feel confident, and uh, that is always a good thing. Another thing I always try to do is to give something to them to focus on. Like, let's say that they have glasses. Uh, just maybe this is a stupid example, but still it works. If they have a person have glasses, I can say, uh, you, your glasses, uh, you have really perfect match, perfect pair of glasses for, for your face, or something like that. Because mm -hmm. then they they get a, some kind of compliment, but they can focus on the glass on the glasses. You yeah. can you can actually talk about a hand or or a, a, a button or anything that they can put their focus on. It yeah. really, 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 really works. Yeah, and it's uh, kind of strange, but it really works. And another tip I actually uh, saw on YouTube yesterday, uh, which I which I going to try today. It was an interesting way. It was to talk about a film with the model that they like and just place the model in a situation in the film so the model will play that role. Mm, yeah, act into it. Yeah. Yes, so acting uh, and I, I, I also think that um, uh, making the opposite, I often think opposite, if a person has a really, it's really easy to make them to smile you know, some people mm. are like, yeah, they're beautiful they're smile. Yeah. They're happy oh, all yeah. the time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Then I know that I, I don't have to work to make them smile. Yeah. Then I go the opposite way. I try to make them look, you know, really, really dull and boring because it's always get the, uh, get the best smiles that way yeah. because we're trying to be serious and then <laughs> they laugh and we get the really best smiles. And the opposite way around. If, they, if, the, if a person is like that, th then we can joke and do fake ugly smiles together yeah. like okay let's do four f ugly smiles the first one is like this 
kind of, yeah, and then they try and, you know, try to play with yeah. either what they have or what they don't have. And you can do the opposite way around to find a way to make some natural expressions. And actually, this is where Ken comes in as well, because you can practice talking to Ken as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's very responsive. <laughs> and, and, he, <laughs> and if you can make responsive. him smile, then, you, then, you're, then you're right close yeah. to where you need to be. And for you guys who do know who Ken is, yeah. <laughs> you know what he's talking about. And for guys, you guys who don't know who Ken is, that is a lighting doll that we it's use. It's a mannequin head, yeah, basically. That we use yeah. to have. Yeah, that is Ken. Yeah. But uh, that is actually one episode again about how to communicate with models. It is, yeah. And, and it's because there's so many tips and tricks, and I think every photographer has their special trick. Uh, I know sometimes you you uh, you ask the talent to, uh, oh, can you see Hans, uh, yeah. one of your as <laughs> assistants that you work a lot with? And then, yeah, yeah, he's over there. Yeah, can you keep an eye on him because he steals a lot? Yeah. And then they get all confused and laughing, and yeah, that uh, always works. Yeah. And so, I, so you can always find something like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, like even if you heard the joke a thousand times, it will be the first time for them. Uh, except the poor people that sit close to me at Profoto because they hear the same jokes over and over <laughs> again. So they're kind of sick and tired of me. But uh, uh, and I think maybe that's why they. they in the past, we had fixed seats I at the pro photo office, and now we have kind of flexible seating, so we can sit anywhere. <laughs> so you can do your jokes. Yeah, no, so, so, I, so I, they, I, I'm forced to move around yeah. and sit in different parts of the uh, pro photo. Oh, maybe, it's, maybe it's only me. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> move seat. around, Anders. Yeah, let's move him around so that. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Yeah, so so maybe we 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 do that as well and talk about uh, communication with models and and bring someone in. But now I hear voices in that room over yeah, there. Yeah. There's like a whole bunch of people over there. Yeah. Uh, they are anxious <laughs> like uh, young stallions uh, yeah. ready for... They want to shoot. Yeah, to get out. So, so why don't we uh, get started and, and start shooting? So with that, thank you guys. And uh, next week you'll be in Abu Dhabi. I will. Yeah. Sorry. So no David, but... There will be an Academy Live, I will be here, and, uh, and we will find uh, sidekicks that are almost as good looking as you are. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I know, it's a really hard now. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> so we will, we will, we will, there will be plenty of Academy Lives yes. coming uh, for, uh, in weeks. Yes, forward. so for me, I won't see you next week, but you will see yes. Anders and a sidekick. Exactly. Yes. Or maybe it's only me. Maybe it's Maybe only it could be only me as well. Mm -hmm. you never know. Never know. <laughs> so, anywho, thank you so much, and uh, uh, all the best to you guys. And keep writing comments in there, and we will answer. And uh, and I will look for uh, product maps on PDFs because uh, I know that I've seen them at least. Yeah. So, thank you so much. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. <laughs>